In this presentation we're going to look at robust regression. Okay. Now the first thing we're going to do is look at a data set where we might use uh, robust regression and it is a data set called stack.loss. It's one of the inbuilt data sets. So if I was to type in question mark stack.loss I get up the help file for it and it gives me the help file uh, Brownlee's stack loss da uh, plant data description. Uh, okay, so the data set is called stack loss. No dot. Okay, with the, for the name of the data frame. But if we were to look at the name of the variables, so stack loss no dot is a data frame with 21 observations on four variables, and they are airflow, water temperature acid cool concentration and stack loss with a dot okay so stack loss with a dot is a column in stack loss without a dot if you get me so this is a variable stack loss without a dot up here is a data frame in that in which that variable is contained so anyway what I'm going to do here is I am going to construct a linear model where stack dot loss is the response variable and these are the three predictor variables okay so let's do that now how we might do that is I'm gonna call it fit one for reasons that will come clear shortly and that is a linear model of stack dot loss explained by all of the other variables you just have to put in a little dot there rather than actually write out the name of all of the other variables it's essentially the little dot there this is the tilde sign is for this uh, symbol here sorry is to ex explain by this little dot here is essentially all the other variables and let's just write in the name of the data frame and just watch out for the it's a little bit confusing here that uh, there's no dot here okay anyway just it's just be very careful about the names and uh, cases and so on okay so that's our model. We can come up with a summary for that model. Uh, fit one. There we have it. There. I uh, look down here at the multiple r squared. That seems pretty good. Adjusted r squared could be better. Still pretty good. And so on. Okay. So what we might also do is look at the uh, plots. Okay. So I'm going to plot. Uh, the uh, fit one. This is to create all the diagnostic plots. Uh, what I'm going to just do also is make the uh, points on the plot a little bit easier to read. So I'm just going to make them. Uh, I'm going to turn them into the plot character 18 and color them in red just to make it a little bit easier to read on the screen. Let's have a look at that. So here is our. There we go. Just gonna make widen that a bit, and there we go. So uh, this is the, well, I've just uh, bypassed one of the points there. This is the second point, and it sort of says that you know you might have to zoom it up there. But essentially, if you run that yourself, twenty-one, th three, and fourteen. Okay, uh, three or four are unusual. Okay, now. Scale and location. This is the third plot here, and you notice that we have 21 up there. It's quite influential. Four is quite uh, influential, and three is quite influential. Let's look at the next one. Okay, see this one down here. This Cook's distance down here, 21. Uh, point 21. This is in one of these Cook's distance danger zones. Okay, and up here, uh, one is quite high as well. In fact. So I don't think it's at that major, but 21 is definitely one of those danger zones. And let's continue on. I think that's the ball. So I'll just see if I can bring up the first one again. Yeah, you still see that this is the first one. That line is not horizontal. Okay. What that should happen there is that that red line, when allowing for a bit of give, should follow the uh, zero line there okay so there's a little bit of a problem there so what we're going to do is we're going to try out robust linear regression because essentially what we have here is 
a couple of highly influential points. Okay, so we can actually compute the Cook's distance and just have a quick look at that of fit one. There we have it there. Uh, uh, just to make that easier to read, actually, I'm going to do that again. There we have them there, but to make it easier to read, I'm just going to round them to uh, five decimal places. Okay. Oops, Cook's distance. And I've gone too far there. That should be okay. There we go. So essentially what we have here is a Cook's distance of, this is for item 20, uh, the case 21, it's uh, not 0.692. Uh, 3 is also quite high, not 0.12. Essentially we have one that's really influential when compared to the rest, essentially. Okay. So in that case we use robust linear regression. Okay. Or we might try it. So anyway, what do we do here? So we ha first off have to install the uh, MASS library. This is what's an inbuilt library and all, so we just have to install that. So what we can do now is type in RLM. Okay, we're going to call this fit2. And that is RLM stack. Essentially we write it the exact same way, except rather than LM we have RLM for robust linear regression till dot dot stack loss okay okay so what this does is it creates a um, linear model checks all the residuals okay and then comes up with a weighting procedure based on those residuals and then refits the model again so we can actually just check what the weighting was Okay, so in ordinary least squares regression, all of the cases have equal weights, and when when we have robust linear regression, particularly by this method, uh, they may not have all have equal weights. Okay, now what has happened here is you notice that we've all have ones. Okay, there's one, 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 one. So essentially, what has happened here is that they have this particular method. Uh, the default method for weighting has decided 21 is big but not big enough to re introduce a or downweight it. Okay. So there's a special technique you'd use there to downweight it. It's more of a pen and paper exercise to construct the new weighting. So I have that in a separate video. It's more a pen and paper exercise. But that's how you'd find them there. What we could do here is just try out a different technique. For, so the default technique is a technique called uh, Huber weighting. I think this is how you type it in. So no, I better just check my. I was sort of guessing there. Let's actually have a quick look at it there. How it? What is the uh, psi? Is this command here? The psi function is special. Is essentially the weighting method used to sort of compute a new weighting. Okay. And I just this is the help file for RLM, by the way. And what I'm going to do is just go down and have a quick check as to how to put in a new one. So it's psi dot huber psi dot hample psi dot by square. Okay. So these are three different uh, methods of essentially um, uh, 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 tackling robust regression. And psi dot huber, oops, is the default. Okay. There's also side dot hample and side up by square. Okay, so how do we uh, approach them? So there we are. So it's psi equals side dot hample, psi equals side dot by square. So I'm just going to try out both of these, and we'll leave it there. So what did I do? I had to go psi dot huber. Now that's the same model again. That hasn't really done anything. Okay. Uh, so that should be more or less similar to. Uh, the well, okay, that's a well, it should be a little bit uh, more or less. Uh, anyway, sorry, I was going to say it's more or less similar to the ordinary d squares, so it's not not exactly. Uh, but I'm going to just try out the other ones here, just to sort of see what they do. So I'm going to try out side dot hample, and I'm going to call this fit three. Okay, weights of fit three. 
Okay, so it seems to be all have equal weighting. And let's have a look at the summary. Yeah, uh, again, you might notice that the not entirely um, different uh, from the other Fit 2. Let's actually have a look at them side by side. Or I'll actually just fit the last one, uh, fit the uh, Spy Squared one. And oops, missed, I skipped over one there. So I'll call that fit four. Oops. And we'll just have, have a look at the coefficients. That's me. There we go. So coef of fit one. Okay. That's the ordinary least squares uh, model. Coef of fit two is when we do it with um, Huber weighting robust linear regression so that's that's that one there is Huber this next one is the bi square okay and the last one is the Hampel one now they they are actually you notice that they the coefficients are quite different Okay. Now there's different techniques as to why they would be computed separately. You just might notice here that uh, for the, the difference between uh, Hampel and bi square in terms of the regression coefficient for water temperature is actually huge. One is actually double the other one. Okay. Uh, there's quite a substantial difference there for in terms of water temperature. Um, the other ones are like okay. There's there there are differences between them, but they're not actually massive. Well, I suppose not point seven one to not point nine three it's a big bit of difference but it's not a lot, for example like this double the distance uh, there's a quite a bit of stuff to learn there about what these all do psi dot uh, bi square and psi dot hample but they are it's just how, like essentially that turns into a pen and paper exercise anyway so that's enough of that that's a robust linear regression and we leave it there